Islamist curse by D.K. Osea. When the neighbor, so old at the time, literally ran away with her eyesight, misrepresented your identity, and the only way she could show remorse was on top of it all, mumble, perplexing whispers, walking off and leaving you even more confused. And your mom continually dismisses all that to simply being senile. Yet, Poka, a name that until the day Nma's antiques struck a chord deep inside your heart, you never heard Mama mention and therefore it rips away your brows and places them right on top of your head. Or was it the blatant rebelliousness of Sambik, the family ancestor, who has revisited Rabiatu in the fourth generation, the only family of a small Bulga village with their house facing north when everyone else is faced west? Is Sambik back to nurse his dream of chieftaincy in his boisterous granddaughter, an athlete who decides to take things into her own hands and chooses a rather Olympian approach to uncovering a family's past that she is herself barred by matriarchy from so much as even mentioning? Will it be her? who exoduses to unite two conflicting patriarchy that changed the family's destiny. In Poka, Azag Skandar, the award-winning author, lives the life of a girl in the first person. And then, in the first person omniscient, he does something nostalgic, very nostalgic, with telling you what's going to happen even before it happens. Among the string of tales dedicated to his late father, including the Slammer's Curse, the title story of The Dead Tree, The Mystic, My Father's Last Dog, The Spirit Child, The Guild, and Night Vigil. Mm -hmm.